We need to write the numbers below in order from smallest to largest. So here we're ordering decimals, and the easiest way to order decimals is to write out the numbers one below the other with the decimal points lined up. So we have 0 0.34, 0 0.3, 0 0.403, 0 0.344, and 0 0.43. So, we've written the numbers out, one below the other, and we've got the decimal points lined up. And that's important, because if our decimal points are lined up, then all the other place values will be lined up as well. So we have a column for our ones, tenths, hundredths, and thousandths. Now the other thing to remember about ordering decimals is that we can write zeros on the end of decimals without changing the value of the number. So instead of 0 0.34, we can write 0 0.340. All this zero tells us is that we don't have any extra thousandths, so we haven't changed the number, but that makes it easier for us to compare. So instead of 0 0.3, we can have 0 0.300, and instead of 0 0.43, we can write 0 0.430. So now, all of our numbers have the same number of digits, and that means that we can compare them in the same way as we would compare whole numbers if we had 340, 300, 403, 344, and 430. So our smallest decimal is 0 0.3, then we have 0 0.34, then 0 0.344, 0 0.403, and our largest decimal is 0 0.43. So when we're writing the decimals in the answer boxes, it's best to write them in the same way that they're presented in the question, so without the zeros on the end. But putting the zeros on the end is important, because normally, if we have whole numbers, numbers with more digits are larger than numbers with fewer digits. But with decimals, what we need to do is write zeros on the end of decimals so that all of the decimals we're comparing have the same number of digits. Now, we need to compare 4, 3.94, so we're writing that with the three ones underneath the four ones, 4.03, 4.004, and 3.499. Now again, we've got our decimal points lined up, but with the number 4, we have a whole number. Now whenever we have a whole number, we can write a decimal point and then zeros on the end without changing the number. 4.000 is the same as 4, because all the zeros tell us is that we don't have any extra tenths, hundredths, or thousandths. So we can write 0 in these empty squares as well. And now, because the decimals have the same number of digits, we can compare them in the same way as we would compare whole numbers. So our smallest decimal is 3.499, because if we ignore the decimal point, that's like 3,499. Then we have 3.94, because if we ignored the decimal point, that's similar to 3,940. Then we have the number 4, which if we ignored the decimal point, would be 4,000. Then we have 4.004, because if we ignored the decimal point, that would be 4,004. And then our largest decimal is 4.03, because if we ignore the decimal point, that's like 4,030. Now here, to make sure we're not confused, I've talked about ignoring the decimal point. But it's important to understand that 4.030 or 4.03 is not the same as 4030. In fact, it's a thousand times smaller. But this method works because we can write zeros on the end of decimals so that they have the same number of digits. That means we can compare them in the same way that we would compare whole numbers.